India and China, just like the US and China, um, have a complex relationship. It has elements of uh, competition. It has elements of cooperation. Um, but unlike a number of other countries, uh, India and China also, uh, the India-China relationship also always has had a potential for conflict. In fact, the two countries even fought a war in uh, 1962. Uh, but the two countries did, um, after the Cold War, uh, develop a more stable relationship that involves managing the border dispute that the two countries have. Um, it, they have the largest undemarcated border in the world. Uh, that would in, it sometimes flare up in terms of crises. Uh, but they decided to reach a set of agreements to manage that border dispute, even if they could not resolve it, and give, give those agreements uh, and have those agreements give the two countries space to develop other aspects of their relationship, particularly developing economic ties. At one point, China was India's largest trading partner, for instance. Uh, but the two countries also then um, as they managed their border dispute and set it aside, uh, you saw the two countries also cooperating on global issues, whether that was climate change uh, or trade, uh, or even at one point, uh, global public health. You saw that unravel after the global financial crisis a little bit, uh, where there was an element of instability introduced in the relationship. There was a sense after the global financial crisis in Beijing um, that it, it, there was a sense of confidence. And what you saw, uh, not just vis-a-vis -vis India, but um, related to a number of Chinese neighbors, a certain level of Chinese assertiveness in the region. But in the India-China case, what you really saw is a change from 2012 uh, when Xi Jinping took office as the Chinese leader. After that point, you saw uh, the boundary crises flare up multiple times between the two countries. This was significant because it had been, the boundary had been stable for a number of years. But in 2013, in 2014, and in 2017, the two countries' militaries, the militaries faced off at the, at the, in their boundary areas. Um, there were no shots fired, um, but this was nonetheless a sign that all was not well in the China-India relationship. In 2020, you saw a significant crisis uh, with the two countries' militaries not just standing off um, against each other or facing off against each other, uh, but a, a crisis that was sparked, uh, according to uh, Indian officials, but also backed up uh, by American uh, officials as well, that the People's Liberation Army took steps at multiple points in the boundary uh, to basically um, uh, grab additional territory, or at least territory that was disputed between the two countries. And what the Indians basically said was Chinese unilateral attempts to change uh, the status quo. This sparked uh, a, uh, a long and probably the longest boundary crisis the two countries have had. More significantly, it led to not, the, not just the two countries' uh, militaries um, staring at each other eyeball to eyeball at the boundary, but also getting into actual conflict. Um, and these scuffles and skirmishes, uh, they led to the death of uh, 20 Indian soldiers and at least four and possibly more Chinese soldiers. These were the first fatalities between China and India at their border uh, since 1975. And this changed the nature of the relationship in terms of making the competition element in the relationship, the confrontation element, uh, more acute rather than the cooperation element. Um, but today, the China-India relationship, the strains of the competition is not just about their disputed boundary. It is much larger, uh, and there's a much larger set of differences between the two countries that really come under the fact that the two countries have very different visions uh, for Asia. The two countries are neighbors, uh, both powerful neighbors, perhaps uh, uh, going to be and, and are the the most significant economies and militaries in Asia, um, but they have different ideas about what that region should look like. Um, many countries think that China seeks, and China has said that it seeks uh, an Asia where it is the dominant power. So a unipolar Asia that is dominated uh, by China, where China gets to dictate the rules. Uh, for India, as well as other Chinese neighbors like Japan and Australia, um, there is a different view and vision of the region. 
And this, re this involves having a multipolar Asia with a number of regional countries, both small uh, and large, um, that shape the rules, uh, but also that everybody not just shape, not just uh, lives in this region, but also respects the rules that everybody have consultatively uh, come together to agree on. And so this fundamental difference between China and India on what the region should look like, China thinking it should be a unipolar Asia, India thinking it should be a multipolar Asia, the China uh, Chinese officials thinking that the U.S. is an external power in Asia, Indian officials saying that the U.S. is very much part of the region and an Indo-Pacific power. These fundamental differences have caused uh, China and India to have uh, problems or differences across, across a range of issues, economic, uh, geopolitical, uh, technological, uh, where the two countries uh, don't also have very much interaction in these spaces uh, today, but also have a fundamental lack of trust between uh, each other. Uh, China, for instance, has deep suspicions about India's relationship and growing partnership with the United States. Uh, and India, in turn, has deep concerns about China's uh, growing and deepening relations with India's other rival, Pakistan. And so you see very different um, visions of the region, very different sets of partnerships, uh, very different views of uh, what the bilateral relationship between the two countries look like and what the border should look like between the two countries. 